Horus and Jansomus is your accent, this is. Even the babies have no respect by the channel Casual Geographic. I don't even know what this video is about, I guess. Animal babies are gonna be dissing lots of other animals, apparently. This is fucking awesome channel. I love how the, the way he makes all the jokes and things, right? So yeah, that's what this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction I did, there's a link in the description, check out the cards for basic thing, cards, yeah, let's watch it. Okay, what? No, if disrespect were a sport, hippos would be Hall of Fame. Because a fetus hippo can treat a grown crocodile as a chew toy and get away with it because they both know the croc won't do anything about it. Maybe hippos will actually do this, will they'll groom and lick the tails of homicide in the form of a crocodile like a teething toddler. Baby hippos have no fear or respect for an animal that could probably one-shot them with those jaws. And that's because crocodiles might have a brain the size of a walnut, but even they're smart enough not to give a mother hippo a reason to catch a body. Because this is how that movie ends. So instead yeah. of turning the baby into past tense, the crocodile just has to sit there and take it. There's actually a reason hippos do this. I just don't know what it is. Like, I've known about this since I was seven, but I never found out why they go out of their way to violate them like this. Seriously, a gigantic crocodile probably can take a hippo. Even then, the chances are low because hippo is humongous, right? So baby hippos, obviously crocodile can fuck it up. But yeah, they would not try to fuck with the mother hippo like he said. But that is just weird to see. Why would they do that? There must be a reason, right? I know there is lots of, you know, weird animal, you know, friendship around the world, right? So is this something like that? I don't know. My best guess is that hippos like the taste of the salt on a crocodile's tail and they just help themselves. Either that or hippos are so disrespectful that they don't even acknowledge crocodiles as living things. But normally crocodiles and hippos will tolerate each other's existence. And sometimes crocodiles will sunbathe while riding on the backs of this African homicide horse. The crocs never get too out of line because again, this is the end game. Oral of this video. When your mom is big enough, you can get away with anything under the sun. At this point, I'm not even gonna apologize. You know what you signed up for. And if my eyes have to bear witness, I'm bringing everyone else down with me. Those are Eponychium, but you probably heard them also be called fairy slippers. What? Those fairy slippers are a rubbery covering that goes over the hooves of a baby horse to protect its mother from the sharp edges while it's still inside. Uh. It's like a pair of house slippers that the baby horse wears until it finally joins the outside. And if you've never seen this before, it's because as soon as the eponychium touches air, it starts to dry and fall off, especially once the foal starts walking. And sometimes the mother horse will pull the rubber boots off the baby with her teeth. And of course, none of it's painful for the foal, it's only painful to look at. After the first 24 hours, most of the horse feathers are already gone. Yeah, how many, <laughs> how many time mother horses got internal bleeding before nature realized, oh fuck it, we'll just give them slippers. It looks bad, but it's actually for a really good reason. Baby horses have to be able to stand and walk as soon as possible, since the smell of a horse being born can attract predators. But, having fully formed hooves could put the mother in a pack if one of the sharp edges cuts her and causes internal bleeding. Moral of this video, this is what compromise looks like. Save me a bit, Japan. Hold you. That does look bad, but don't worry, it's worse than you think. Now I could be wrong, I might be wrong, but if I had to guess, that is some type of eel, especially a snaggletooth snake eel. You can find this demonic fire hose in the Ooh. Pacific Ocean. Apparently the biggest ones can grow to three and a half feet. And I'm gonna go ahead and guess they're one of those animals designed to live at the bottom of the ocean so when you bring them up to the surface they become deformed creations belonging to Satan. Which is probably why it looks like a possessed balloon animal as a result of bloating after death. And with those needles for teeth we can guess that it eats small fish, crustaceans, and maybe even squid and those teeth keep the struggling prey from escaping. And if that acid trip of a rough draft is anything like the moray eel then they have a second set of pharyngeal jaws in its throat to make sure whatever goes in doesn't come out. But what having a throat fuck? with a child lock does backfire when you choke yourself into an obituary. And I know I said snaggletooth before, but it could also be a fangtooth snake eel, especially since they're found deeper down. And as much as I genuinely love freaking y'all out, they're pretty much harmless and probably wouldn't bite you unless you did something to deserve it. So this thing's probably dead. But this is proof that nature has rough drafts and its trash bin is the bottom of the ocean. You see these bones? You wanna know what made these bones? You don't want to know what made these bones. Yeah. Because this graveyard was found in a nest of one of the most homicidal things in the Amazon. The Harpy Eagle is a paralysis demon with wings. Not only are they one of the largest murder tweeties in the world, they have talons that are as big as the claws of a grizzly bear. Harpies use those vice grips to crush the bones of their prey on the way back to the nest. But there's one important thing about them that makes them a special type of menace. The worst thing about this eagle 
are those wings. Nature gave Harpy Eagle short wings, meaning not only can they fly through the jungle to catch prey, it means no name on the census is safe. Which is why this steroid hell pigeon has one of the most disrespectful KDs out there. Just in this picture, you can see monkeys, sloths, armadillos, and lizards that never made it home because this Air Bundy caught him slipping. That is literally how they hunt. They'll sit in a- Oh my god, this thing is way too big, man. I mean, the, the, close to the man, this thing is way too big. But I know, you know, there are lots of different parts of the world where there are, you know, animals are really weird and different than you, you're, whatever you're commonly, you know, accustomed to, I guess. But still, if I just go to, go to places like this and if I see something like that, I'll be terrified as fuck. Like, what the fuck is that? And knowing that it can kill you because it has claws and shit that can basically cut your throat or something. It's just even more scary. Tree for hours just waiting for a chance to activate someone's life insurance. Yeah, Buckbeak, don't be playing. Because Look you at said, this shit. here's five things you might not know about this Black Air Force ferret. One of their main defenses involves flipping their anus inside out and assaulting your senses with the smell. Honey badgers are cousins with skunks and wolverines and they smell just as ripe. Their reversible booty hole is so vile that it apparently stuns bees and stops them from attacking. Which brings us to number two, honey badgers are not immune to bee stings. They are resistant so they probably would last longer than you, but if enough bees get under a dome they could end up beeing a pack. But since these hood weasels don't value life, not even their own, sometimes they'll actually sit there and keep eating while actively being stung by hundreds of bees. And because they are the way they are, sometimes they'll keep eating until they eventually get stung to death. Number three, it's believed that cheetah cubs evolved to look like honey badgers so they could avoid getting harassed by other animals. Meaning this African bush ferret is such a case that a predatory big cat has to impersonate them just to get more respect. Number four, in some parts of Central- Ah, oh, this nature surprises me every single time. Look at that. It, it fucking thing looks like that just to, you know, make sure the predators don't basically kill it. I mean, that is just next level shit. I mean, ch cheetahs are weak, obviously we know it. I mean, I, obviously I didn't know that before reacting to the Tier Zoo video, I guess just a few months ago. I was like, a cheetah, one of the big cats. Of course, they might be weaker than the other big cats, but it is a big cat. In the end, it must be a predator. No, 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 they are pretty damn fucking weak. Central India, they're called a name that translates to grave badger because apparently the honey badger has a reputation for digging out human graves and eating the corpses. And number five, oh, honey badgers I didn't know that. aren't real badgers. Those are true badgers and the honey badgers all the way over there. So when you hear me call this a steroid felony weasel, I'm only half kidding. That each other exists. What, don't Sharks. know they exist? Sharks have no fucking clue that camels exist. And oh boy, do I have a story for you. So like fun fact, actually mildly disturbing fact. Camels are one of those animals that have no business swimming but do it anyway, and they're unnecessarily good at it. There and an go. animal whose home address is a desert being able to pull up on you in the ocean is one of the biggest f you I do what I want moves from nature. There's a type of dromedary camel called Karai that are so comfortable with water that they'll cross rivers and even shallow stretches of the ocean as they look for food. And that's because these overgrown water donkeys love eating mangroves on islands offshore so much that they'll travel for hours to get it. There's actually a pretty good chance that at least one shark has seen one of these sand loving hump jockeys out in the ocean. He told his friends, they did not believe him. Moral of this video, if you're ever on a boat off the coast of a country like Algeria, you better be prepared to say what's up to a camel. This is a picture of an alligator. I mean, seriously, man, camels, you know, going through water like that, of course, once, once anything enters the water, doesn't matter how top of the food chain it is, it's not, no longer the top of the food chain. Socks like this, my house, you just entered my house. The end. A gator riding on top of a manatee in Florida. I've already explained how gators aren't really a threat to full-grown manatees, and oftentimes the same reptile that would tear your arm completely off gives manatees the right of way in the water. But apparently these two hang out as friends. Kind of. There's a couple reasons why this might be happening. Alligators are cold-blooded, so they love chilling in sunny spots. And I guess it figured an aquatic breathing beanbag chair was as good as any rock or log. Since manatees are basically the capybara of the water. Oh seriously, different animal, but same vibes. Either the manatee doesn't mind or he's simply too unbothered to care. And to somehow make it even more wholesome, alligators and crocodiles often give each other piggyback rides. I don't really know why exactly they do this, but since it doesn't do anything for them in terms of survival, you can assume they do it. I remember watching a clip where a fucking fox, right? A fox was riding a crocodile or alligator, I don't remember, I think it was an alligator. A fox was riding alligator, seriously. I mean, uh, you know, one thing I realized that animals are more smarter than we know, right? And they create this kind of bonds with different species that would basically surprise us. And probably lots of humans don't even know. Actually, scientists were researching this shit, even they barely, you know, scratching the surface of it. Like how they interact and shit. Because, you know, watching a fox being, a, you know, uh, friendly to an alligator and piggyback riding with that and alligator don't minding that, that's just surprising to me. Just cause it's fun. 
probably a stretch, but there's a small chance that this is an alligator's way of playing with the manatee, and the manatee is just too unproblematic to stop him. Probably the first thing, but for the sake of my mental health, I'm gonna go with the playing. Let me tell you why this bird is the biggest menace to society you've never heard of. This is a southern giant petrel. Its nickname is a stinker because they have the same dub diet as vultures with none of the redeeming qualities. This dumpster tweety takes all kinds of meat, rotting, decaying, disease, it don't matter, they don't discriminate. And just like vultures, when this overgrown coarse pigeon finds a carcass, it starts eating it ass first. They also delete and eat penguin chicks, and they've even been known to drown gannet chicks by holding them underwater until their soul gets evicted. Basically performing a baptism and an abortion for the price of one. <laughs> also the giant in the name is because the biggest ones can have a wingspan of nearly 7 feet. Meaning you're probably shorter than the length of its wings. It's not even the worst thing about them. If the petrol thinks you're too close, it'll projectile vomit the contents of whatever disrespect was marinating in its garbage disposal of a stomach. As if getting sprayed with half-eaten seal wasn't enough, it's actually so acidic that it can eat at the waterproof coating of seabirds feathers. And some of the seabirds that get hit can't swim. Since they have sea literally in their name, that's a dick move. Also the red face is because they spend so much time violating the corpses of other animals. They're basically seagulls on crack. Those are the eyes of a bird that will never uh... see heaven. Yeah, cheetahs aren't big cats. Yeah, that thing is so fucking disgusting because it eats the rotting corpses and then spew it out. Oh, Ugh. You're right, I probably should have explained that. So when you talk about wildcats, you have two flavors of felines. You got the panther genus and you got there team felinae. Yeah. And a panther genus has lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, and snow roar. leopards. And they all have one thing in common, it's that they can all roar. Except the snow leopard, but they're so cool they get in strictly off clout. And these are what people call big cats, but you'll probably notice there's two big names missing. And that's because mountain lions and cheetahs can't roar, so they don't qualify as big cats, meaning they belong to the second group of cats. Which also includes ocelots, caracals, lynxes, and even the pet cat watching you watch this. Instead of roaring, these guys purr. Apparently, if you're a cheetah, you also chirp like a bird, because of course they do. Also, the name big cat doesn't really refer to their size, because the smallest big cat is outweighed by the biggest little cat. Basically, it comes down to if you can roar, you sit at the big cat lunch table. If you purr, you ride the little cat bus. And if you're a cheetah, you sit alone because honestly, what is this? I'm not gonna lie, if cheetah was close to me, right, and oh fuck, I'm gonna die and he start doing that like, yeah, this shit can do shit, I'll kick its face basically. I know I would die in the end, but still. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Man, cheetah, uh, nature did really wrong to it, I guess. <laughs> Man, this video was awesome and all that, you know, serious horror music in the background. Like, man, this channel is good. Alright, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the week's Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cars, hope you like everything, cars. And yeah, I'll see you next time.